as I just briefly outlined, we're going to just explain how and where the opportunities, what kind of opportunities exist uh, within the uh, three priority sectors in Ghana and how we're going to work with the government of Ghana to accelerate uh, investment. Uh, so just kind of very briefly, Ghana has a very bold ambition. Uh, it wants to industrialize its economy, create large-scale jobs, and become a really big manufacturing power base for within West Africa. Uh, as Baptiste uh, outlined briefly, it has a lot of uh, innate advantages, including a skilled labor force, access to a lot of minerals uh, and uh, other materials, and uh, an effective kind of a trade facilitation process that gives it access to some of the key export and uh, export markets. Uh, Ghana's ambition also uh, includes becoming a less aid-reliant economy and so kind of generate its own uh, wealth and create uh, large-scale prosperity uh, for, its, uh, uh, for its people. Uh, so again, very briefly, the Ghana JET program, which is an FCDO, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office funded program, uh, which is led by Palladium and uh, BCG works on the investment acceleration component. Uh, as we, as, we, as uh, Baptiste explained before, we've identified three priority sectors where we would actually work with the government uh, to drive investment, and they are automotive, pharma, textiles, and garments. Uh, and these sectors have been identified because there are clear, tangible opportunities to promote uh, investment here. Uh, again, uh, just a quick summary of where the opportunity exists within automotive. Now, automotive sector, there has been a lot of excitement in Ghana with uh, the investments from firms like Volkswagen and Toyota in setting up uh, plants to manufacture, kind of, semi, kind of assemble uh, from semi-knockdown kits. Uh, so the SKD assembly is a big uh, part of what um, Ghana is doing at the moment. And within government, there is a real concerted effort to make sure this actually is just a start and further investment can actually be um, rushed into the sector to create uh, you know, a, a, a bigger automotive ecosystem. Now, automotive sector, it, it's a long-term play. If you look at uh, you know, countries like Turkey or countries like India, you know, it's been like a 20, 30-year journey uh, before they actually became a you know, large-scale integrated uh, ma ma you know, car manufacturer. However, there are, you know, these, the, 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 you know, to get there, you do need to go through various steps. So for Ghana, uh, and the clear opportunity is an assembly at, as a start. So to go from SKDs to kind of complete knockdown kits, uh, and uh, to, uh, and also kind of um, you know, replace the mark, uh, you know, the demand that is currently met through second-hand car demands. Now to do that, obviously, you need you need a range of uh, kind of measures. Um, firstly, you need to actually make it more difficult to to import really old uh, cars that flood the market. Uh, but secondly, there's a good reason why people actually buy these cars. They are cheaper and more av available. Uh, to, so one has to actually work, do a lot of work in automotive finance as well to actually kind of genuinely unlock the potential for uh, a locally manufactured cars replacing kind of imported, imported cars. Uh, so assembly is a big play. The next big play uh, would be kind of the components and the well, in, initially the kind of uh, the aftermarket uh, sales for uh, parts that are quickly worn off, so for example, tires, wipers, brake pads, etc., as a start, and then build on that to actually get into kind of more complex, uh, complex plays. Uh, the investment required uh, isn't sizable given the opportunity, uh, and in addition to actually kind of being able to meet local demand, regional demand, uh, it would also create, uh, you know, a a it would also create a lot of jobs. Uh, so the, the advantages that Ghana has beyond labor, you know, it has raw materials, it has uh, the free trade agreements uh, to actually uh, kind of make things, uh, to, to, uh, to keep things uh, moving forward. And the, more importantly, within the automotive sector, the government of Ghana has a, a very strong investor-centric approach. Moving on to, uh, to the pharma sector, again, you know, there's both a, a local uh, as well as uh, you know, you know, a regional opportunity here. 
uh, in terms of actually the sizable opportunity. I think COVID-19 uh, has actually helped m many countries around the world to realize the importance of having a strong domestic pharmaceutical sector. Now, Ghana is not starting from scratch. Uh, it has uh, some strong uh, plants in existence, uh, which are already making uh, you know, a, a, a range of products. Uh, so there is a real opportunity here to actually scale up these plants uh, you know, and expand production uh, in, 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 into new areas. Uh, we've, as part of the program, we've actually engaged with a lot of investors and some, there's some really interesting observations about why Ghana might actually have some advantages uh, here. Yet, as uh, you know, is evident, pharma is a very, very complex uh, sector. You know, it is dominated by many of the OECD countries as well as countries like China and India. Uh, so to actually, the, the real opportunities, you know, to, to actually particularly to get to fill and finish kind of products, um, there needs to be both policy as well as kind of investor-centric approach uh, to attract investment. Uh, again, kind of, we've done an estimate of the kind of opportunities that, you know, the kind of, in, the scale of investment that is required uh, to actually get both brownfield and kind of greenfield investment. Uh, the, what, 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 one of the advantages of the pharma sector beyond, uh, shall we say, job creation uh, is that it's actually a complex sector. It, uh, you know, when we talk about economic transformation of a country, uh, you know, entering into a sector like pharma actually leads to kind of that, that the complex ecosystem of, say, universities and research institutions, uh, as well as skilled labor are all collaborating uh, with the industry. Uh, to create the kind of ecosystem that ultimately will have kind of spillover benefits uh, for other sectors as well. So uh, while pharma uh, is a long-term play, there are some clear short-term opportunities uh, that Ghana can capitalize on. Um, within the textile sector as well, you know, it's a large market uh, and from an export point of view, there are some clear advantages given the preferential access to both the US uh, and, the, uh, and the European uh, European market, and uh, so it, 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 again, labor is a big advantage. But there are also other advantages, like the fact that Ghana has, uh, you know, port that works a lot more effectively than, say, other parts of Africa. Uh, it has a large labor force, uh, and it also technically has access. Uh, you know, it is it, it within a region uh, that, where there is really high quality uh, cotton. Uh, so. And one of the trends that's happening across the sector is many, many, many garment manufacturers are actually keen to diversify from their over-dependence on China. And there are some clear reasons why many countries want to get out of China at this point, particularly uh, given some of the US sanctions on, uh, on, on, on Chinese cotton. Uh, so there's an, there are many garment manufacturers that are actually looking uh, at other, uh, other locations, and Ghana does uh, feature in the plans of some of the biggest brands. Uh, and the next step, obviously, is to clearly figure out what you need to do uh, to actually get in here as well. Here, the short term, short to medium term opportunity is in garments. Textiles is a longer term play, uh, and it requires much higher scale uh, investment. But again, like we discussed um, uh, you know, in, in the pharma sector, you, know, you need to look at these as various steps of a ladder. And so entering the garment sector is, is often uh, you know, the really first step before actually you can think of a, a larger integrated uh, uh, garment and textile uh, <coughs> sector. Uh, the job creation opportunities, particularly at the lower end, uh, you know, in, in a growing country like Ghana, are very, very clear in the garment sector as well. What are the investors saying? So I'm, I've just given you a quick snapshot of some of the perspectives that we've heard from local, regional, as well as international investors. We've had an opportunity to engage with some of the biggest names uh, in the sector, in, in, in auto, uh, in pharma, as well as in, uh, kind of in, uh, in, in garments and textiles. There is a lot of optimism. There is a sense, as the, the minister outlined, there is a, there's a clear sense that uh, from a policy perspective, this is a government actually that wants to actually attract investment. Uh, there's also the sense that the, you know, we, we talked about political uh, stability, and you know I think there's always the danger of a single story when it comes to talking about uh, investing in Africa. But we are also seeing that you know uh, they are actually able to kind of say 
well, there is political stability here, there is democracy. So if you're looking at garment, uh, the garment sector, especially given the pressures in recent years, uh, many manufacturers that we talk to want a country where trade unions operate, labor standards are maintained, minimum wages are honored. Uh, so there is a clear, uh, there are good reasons why people would want to, uh, to, to, to invest uh, in Ghana. So how do we make this happen? Um, so one of the approaches that we've pioneered, we've pioneered in several countries with some effect uh, is what we call an, uh, an investment or an industrialization uh, accelerator. Uh, so the investment accelerator uh, you know, is simply a kind of a purposed, uh, a special purpose or a tactical task force. It's not like a permanent structure. Uh, you know, it basically identifies really high impact opportunities and figures out how to actually take it from identification to conclusion of investment. Now, why is this, why is this necessary? Uh, firstly, it's quite important to align what government investment priorities are, what are the sectors that the government really wants investment, and what are some of the social objectives in terms of uh, kind of job creation, skill development, etc. Um, often these efforts are kind of fragmented, uh, you know, across ministries, you know, across different agencies, and it's important to actually bring it together so that the, in the investors have kind of a smoother access to the decision-making process. Uh, it's also very difficult for governments to actually kind of uh, maneuver through the complex investor landscape. So what is important is actually to kind of really set up a, a dedicated process that allows uh, governments to, uh, to to go from identifying opportunities to actually uh, you know materializing uh, making the investment materialize. So what we see an invest an industrialization ta uh, you know accelerator do is actually creating a task force that actually brings key decision makers together uh, to enable rapid decision making so that efforts are not actually uh, siloed. Now, what is important uh, to understand is that an investment accelerator, which you know we'd be working with uh, MOTI to implement, is, is is not actually meant to to to, to replace uh, you know existing government units. It's not an additional layer of bureaucracy. It's not a permanent body. It is purely an execution and monitoring support uh, for the government. It will actually work with. Uh, existing uh, government civil servants. Our role will be actually more of coaching and supporting and, and making sure that the, the processes are right to actually make investment materialize. So it, it is actually working in agile three-week sprints of you know, kind of clearly identifying what each member of, the, of, of this accelerator unit does and making sure they're taken to, uh, to conclusion. It's in providing support to government to ensure that they can actually engage investors uh, and uh, you know the, the pe uh, people you know within mid level of government have the right toolkits and the right skills to uh, to, to have those conversations with the investors and address specific concerns uh, they have. The accelerator will also be kind of working towards tangible uh, in, in, you know in, in impact in terms of investment realized, jobs created, uh, and so they'll be like clearly measurable indicators. Uh, and we've seen this work, and we've seen this work not just uh, you know in, in other African countries, but we've also we are currently doing this in in, in a few East Asian uh, countries as well. Uh, it's also about ultimately making sure that the government can actually do this on its own, and making sure that we transfer uh, capabilities. So, in conclusion, um, with, with 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 the Jet Program, we are we we are here as partners to support the government of Ghana. Uh, we, we want to get that message that uh, the Honorable Minister said that Ghana is really open for business and we will, we are, you know, we, we, we'll be a partner working alongside the government uh, to make that uh, a reality. Thank you very much.
Thanks very much, Robin. That was really insightful. Um, next, we're going to have a presentation from the Chief of Party of USAID in Ghana. He's going to be explaining a little bit about the enabling environment for agri-processing and agriculture investments. So he's actually recorded this, so um, he's going to be up on the screen here. Thank you. I would like to say a big thank you to the, the current affairs for giving us an update on investment environment in Ghana. We are very grateful, sir. It gives me great pleasure to make a presentation on the topic, creating an enabling environment for agricultural investments in Ghana at this Congratulations to organizers of this event, as well as my colleagues from the Palladium Group who are implementing the Debt Project in Ghana and also sponsoring this very particular session. I would like to say Aiko, as we say in Ghana. In the growing Africa, unlocking the potential of agreements reports. The World Bank projected that Africa's farmers and agribusinesses could create a trillion dollar food market by 2030 if they can expand their access to capital, electric power, better technology, and irrigated land to grow high value nutritious foods. The question is what Ghana as a country? need to, to take advantage of these upside potential and be a part of the opportunities for transformational structural change in the sector. And in a, the answer to this question among others is anchored in the overarching transformation development strategy of inclusiveness. The importance of the agriculture sector to Ghana's future overstated. Three out of every five Ghanaians work in agriculture and its respective value chain. There are over 6 million women in the sector, as well as hundreds of thousands of new workers, including many youth who enter the labor force of these value chains each year. Overall, the sector generates over $13 billion annually for the national economy. As Ghana looks to graduate from a development assistance recipient towards self-reliance, building on this foundation will be essential to sustainable, inclusive, long-term growth and prosperity. The Ghana government's planting for food and jobs policy is a necessary step of modernizing agriculture and improve production efficiency by investing in the food, agriculture, and agribusiness value chains, including storage, transportation, processing, packaging, and marketing, which will help improve incomes and create new businesses and job opportunities in the sector. Plant for food and jobs is therefore a critical policy intervention to ultimately transform Ghana's agriculture that will eventually spare the industrialization of the economy to create jobs and boost incomes. This policy is providing support to the one district, one factory policy, as most of these factories depend on these primary agricultural produce as raw materials for processing. These activities are seeking to get people out of poverty. The continuous public and private sectors investments in the agriculture sector will facilitate attaining optimal potential for development. 
Thus, with the right level of support, Ghana can unlock substantial value in the farming through storage, transportation, agro-processing, branding and marketing, and distribution of food and commercial crops, as well as meat products, along with other agribusiness products and services like agrochemicals, farm tools, and machinery, farm management software, and seed production among Many people in the sector will struggle, still struggle to, many people in the sector still struggle to access the financing and investment they need to grow their businesses, feed their families, and improve their livelihoods. Many financial institutions are interested in serving the sector, but are reluctant to unsure or unsure about for taking on the added cost of seeking out promising opportunity and training staff in the nuances of the sector and developing loan products that align with agribusiness needs. The resulting financing gaps poses a central challenge to farmers and businesses as they strive to build their agribusinesses and meet the growing demand for agricultural goods and services, both here and abroad. The improvements in productivity, trade flows, nutrition, food security, women and youth empowerment, and resilience that the global food security strategy seeks to achieve in Ghana all hinge on the wide availability of finance throughout the agriculture sector. Unlocking finance in Ghana's agricultural value chains is therefore critical to ensuring full security, sustainable and inclusive economic growth. To achieve this objective, the US government through USAID and the Presidential Feed the Future Initiative awarded the Feed the Future Ghana Mobilizing Finance and Agriculture MFA project to the Palladium Group in October 2020. The goal of the four year project is to increase the commercial financing available for agriculture to facilitate capital investment and promote trade. The Feed the Future Ghana Mobilizing Finance and Agriculture project will leverage performance based incentives to unlock over $260 million in investment in target agricultural value chains in Ghana, including maize, soy, granite, cowpea, mango, cashew, share, and other high value export crops. The MFA activity recognizes that improved access to finance and investment is essential for the overall market systems to function and grow. The improved access to finance that MFA is providing will support the overall system while helping individuals build a better life for themselves and their communities. The mobilizing finance and agriculture activity would also maximize sustainability so that impact and benefits to agricultural investment will continue to grow and scale. Other USAID activities within the global food security strategy and the JET project would benefit from the long term improvements in the financial system that the MFA activity or force finance. If you need or investment to expand your production activity, mechanize your operations or otherwise grow your business, we can help you. Mobilizing finance and agriculture activity building a network of transaction advisors and financial institutions. 
that cater to various financing needs and are bringing access to new sources of capital and new financing models. For business advice service providers interested in expanding their business or getting into deal facilitation for the agribusiness sector, mobilize, mobilizing finance in Nigeria is building a sustainable market for transaction advice service providers and will help you build relationships with banks and investors, help you develop new credit lines and share profiles of enterprises seeking finance. We are also using a portion of our resources as strategic incentives to engage business advice service providers to assist enterprises in assessing transaction facilitation services. Therefore, for financial institutions interested in expanding your business or your agricultural lending portfolio, Mobilizing finance in agriculture activity will be working with you to reduce transaction costs, improve risk mitigation, build staff capacity, incentivize expansion in agricultural lending. As we work to stimulate the supply of finance for agriculture, we will be providing financial institutions within our network for the resource-based incentive for meeting lending targets and reaching new clients. The opportunity for potential strategic sector partners, including corporate institutions, anchor buyers, digital platforms, and financial institutions that have ideas, or plans for inclusive business growth that require a financing solution. If you have an innovative new business models or growth plan that with the right financial institution, a mediary or technical partners could unlock financing for small borrowers as well, we want to hear from you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to think about the opportunities that exist for investors along the entire value chain of the sector, as the Ghana government and the investment committee augment activities to attract foreign direct investment, to generate jobs, to enhance livelihoods. Combined with the strong legal and regulatory framework which protects your investment, the incentives and abundance of talent in the sector and the de-risking of the sector in order to attract finance, there can never be a better time for farmers, agro-processors, technological distribution and production service providers to invest in the sector. I take this opportunity to thank AFS, IC, and the Palladium Group, implementers of the debt project and mobilizing finance in agricultural activity and to encourage investors of our continued commitment to working with all to ensure a thriving sector that yields positive returns for all. Thank you for your attention. May God bless you and our homeland, Ghana. Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Victor Entry. I'm the chief of party on the Feed the Future Ghana mobilizing finance and agriculture activity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Entry. Um, fantastic speech. I will share this with Ronnie's team so that they can do the editing and we will see you live tomorrow on the screen, on the big screen. Okay. But so what time would it be screened? Um, don't quote me on this, but I think it should be early in the morning. Um, I'll ask Ronnie to confirm to you the timing of the screening so that you can check in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. Uh, good evening. Bye.